Uh, let's let's reframe this. Uh, bad results. Hi, my name is Andrew LaFors. I teach AP U.S. History, Foreign Policy, and Western Civ at Fort Zumwalt West High School. There's a great culture here and a lot of great teachers I've been able to emulate and learn from and be mentored by, uh, but the kids, like, the kids make a culture of the school and we have great kids um, that come from great families in this community who are here, uh, eager to learn, as eager as I think we could expect on most days. And um, they give you energy, you know? At the end of my days, when I think about my days, a lot of those memories are just going to be faces from this room, 259, and, and that, that's what makes us a great place. I mean, we have great administration, great staff, but great kids are the heart and soul of a high school. So, I, you know, I really try to kind of be intentional about this, teaching U.S. history, that, you know, the, the rap that's out there with young people these days is that they can't handle different points of view, different opinions, and debate. And so, you know, as educators, we have a role in that. And really, if you think about why we have social studies in the first place, it's to make better citizens. That's the whole point. We have to model it for them. Maybe we haven't shown them in our media how to have discussions. Maybe they are giving us exactly what we're showing them debate is and discussion and how to deal with competing ideas. So really with U.S. history, it gives us a lot of opportunities to kind of break some mythologies and tell multiple stories, right? So this myth of single story that every story has one perspective and that's the dominant perspective and that's the correct perspective. And what people need to understand is those perspectives aren't necessarily wrong, but they're just not complete because there's other stories that feed into that and that's how you get to the truth. So it's not to prove this story or this story about any particular topic is the right one, but rather let's bring those all together and figure out what's happening. And then when we can do that, we can see our common, you know, Americanism, humanity, all of those things. I see teachers as people who are, you know, students want to be in their comfort zone. That's their, all humans default setting. We want to be in comfort. And so our jobs and our parents' jobs and our faith leaders' jobs and all the other people is to push them out of their comfort zone. Not to a terrifying place, but to help them get out of there. You know, they say with PTSD, avoiding things that stress you is a symptom, not a cure. And so with anything about stress or anxiety, um, within reason, we want to help people get out of that comfort zone because that's the cure. Avoiding it is, is the symptom. And so we've been able to do a good job. And young people, you've got to give them credit. They can talk about complex things if you show them why we're doing it, what the point is, if you defend every kid in the room. But you also make sure that we're saying opinions are historically defensible. So we can't just say whatever we want, right? Hate speech is not going to be acceptable. Some of these, as long as it's historically defensible though, it's valid. And we get rid of those ad hominem attacks. So the key question I think for students is, what do you want to have happen when people listen to you? Do you want them to hear you? And if you want them to hear you, if that's the goal, um, it changes the way you're responding to them. So if the conversation is set up like a, who's going to win this debate? Uh, it kind of collapses. But they are, I kind of thought that civility would be more difficult, and it's just not. Um, they do a good job of respecting each other, but standing their ground and, and sharing opinions. So they're not just being polite to each other. They're being respectful, but they're disagreeing. And then at the end of the year, you know, oftentimes students will say like, A, thank you for tr talking to us like an adult which I think is a great compliment. I'm not sure exactly what it means. Um, but then they say, you know, you, I learned, you know, this opened my eyes to so many like different perspectives than I've had before. And that's really what it's about. It's not about, hey, there's a certain view you have to have about anything because, you know, I don't, you know, there is no capital T like truth for, you know, how, solutions to all these problems, but just getting them thinking. And that's, I mean, that's the best compliment is that, you know, they said this class made me think or I thought about things in a different way more than just like coming into a history class and learning dates. And so when they say that, I feel really, really good. Honestly, I can say the first discussion we had, it was over Christopher Columbus and we kind of expanded on it and talked kind of more about the slavery portion. We kind of got into like how 
um, we were kind of abusing the natives already here and then it kind of like just escalated to different things and how we're talking about it now. And that was probably the hardest because we didn't really know how to speak correctly in front of each other. And the forest definitely helped saying like, we're going to discuss this in a positive way. Like he talks from different perspectives that we might not have ever thought of. Mr. LaForce's class, it's a great environment. Uh, it really helps students of all backgrounds, uh, you know, no matter where you come from, no matter what you've been through, it helps you feel like, you know, you're in a safe space, you know, you can speak your mind, um, you know, in an appropriate and mature manner, um, you know, without getting, you know, bashed on or, you know, um, it's, a, it's a great place because my peer, I've learned a lot from my peers. Um, it's really o helped open my mind on different perspectives, um, different views on the world, um, and it's helped me expand my knowledge of you know different lifestyles that I personally haven't came encounter with. So we have discussions that are sometimes sensitive, and uh, I mean the majority of the class is is not people of color, so sometimes it can be touchy. Sometimes we talk about things that. That are difficult to talk about, and we we touch on subjects that, that don't just involve the United States. That are you know international subjects that involve people of color from all over the world. And I think the class is different from other history classes in that you won't just do mundane things, and you won't just you won't just be focusing or centralizing on one one topic or one discussion. You'll have many discussions over many different things. And but it is comfortable, Mr. LaForce. He always makes sure to to keep students engaged in conversation, but pulled back in what they say at certain times just to make sure that nobody's being offensive, nobody's being hurt, and nobody's being disregarded. We're all very considerate of each other. So I, I personally, I don't have any discomfort. Um, I think my classmates who are in there, whether they are people of color or not, I, I don't think anybody experiences significant discomfort. And I think we're all able to speak about topics maturely and uh, get somewhere with them, progress with them somehow. One of the things that we often talk about is that when you read something, you have to understand perspective on it and point of view on it. And often we take it as fact, and in today's day and age, with media being so quick and us being able to get stories so fast, we often just take things as fact, when in reality there's so many more perspectives and so many more ideas that go into a fact or a story or a, anything, really. Um, and we have to keep things in perspective and understand that it's not just one way to think about things. There's many, many ways to think about things that can also be right, and other perspectives that can also be right. And the way to debate things and talk about things is to understand someone else's perspective as well as incorporate it into your own. Well, being like one of the only black people in there, it's nice to know that like there's a teacher who's really uh, pretty thoughtful about what he's doing and that he's trying like consciously to have this open dialogue where everyone can speak and as like a minority in the classroom like you want to feel like you can say things without being like you know jumped on and I think he does a really good job of that for me personally.